Hey again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and we are starting a project to put in some cut flowers, a cut flower bed into our garden. It doesn't look like much right now on the ground there. It's just the fence panels are already pre-assembled. I'll be putting those up in a second. Then we'll get some raised beds in place and also some soil. This is a great time of year to start planning for gardening for next year. It gives time for that uh, compost and that organic matter in that soil to start breaking down, get a little bit less hot before the spring season. So let me show you this, how this goes together. As I say, one half of this is cut flowers for our customers. Uh, another section off to the side here is going to be a veggie garden for my daughter. So let's get going. All right, here it is all assembled. I pounded in the posts. Uh, we got those attached. It didn't take all that long because we had pre-assembled all of these sections inside the house. So this went up pretty quickly. The next thing we want to do is work on some raised beds. We're not going to be making wooden raised beds, but they will have wooden frames that we're putting on top of posts and we'll have ground cloth on the inside so we can protect that wood from rotting. Let me show you what I mean. Well, this is far enough along now that you can see how this is coming together. And it also brings me to the main thrust of this video, which is why this is such a good time of year to take on a project like this, to put it in a new garden bed, to really start setting up the garden for next year. And the number one reason here, of course, is just time. Uh, I get busy during the spring and summer season. I'm sure you do as a gardener as well. Uh, we have lots of customers on the farm at that time of year. It would not be the right time to tackle anything like this. I wouldn't have time to put together the picket fences or any of the other decorative features that I'm putting together for this. We're putting an archway on the front, by the way. I'll show you that in a minute. So time, if I can transport this to a slower part of the year, I'm quite happy with that. But the second reason why this is such a good time of year to put in new garden beds has to do with the soil here. The soil is a blend of sand, composted bark, composted wood, and also uh, manure. And what happens when you put in fresh manure and freshly composted wood is that it can get a little bit hot. And if this pile sits for a while, you'll start to see it get warm and steam come off of it as you dig into it. So it's still a little bit high in fertilizer and still has a lot of microbial activity going on in it. If I can put it in right now and the depth of this soil is kind of deceptive. It looks like the beds are about a foot high, but it's only about six inches, eight inches of soil and the rest is just for show. So if I can put that down now and let it rest through the weather, there's gonna get rain, we're gonna get snow. Uh, and by the time I'm planting this in early spring, hopefully the fertilizer levels will be low enough. It won't be quite such a hot product. And then my plants can grow well into it without burning those little roots. One more quick note on the composition of this soil. I mentioned it's a blend of composted wood product and manure. Well, if you add manure straight as your soil or as your amendment, it does tend to raise the pH of your soil. And if you were to use the uh, wood bark or the wood mulch and its composting, it will tend to lower the pH of your soil. Uh, these two, of course, in the right proportions in a blend, it was the goal of our landscape soil supplier to make those two balance out each other. And I've tested it and that's exactly what it is. So just a word to you, if you're considering adding uh, manure or composted wood uh, to your garden, just be aware of the pH effects that can have. Ours is generally a neutral to slightly acidic uh, soil pH, so this should just be fine for it. Uh, one question that may have risen to your mind is why am I building these kind of uh, 
raised beds with the false top on them. If you see me lift here, you can see that the, uh, the top portion just comes straight off and I'm gonna pull those off during the winter. So really in the end, these are not truly raised beds. I'm a big fan of Charles Dowding and the way that he puts on basically a thick mulch right on the ground. So these are just in ground beds and the raised bed portion of it, the, the wood frame is, uh, is removable and it's really just there for show because we're trying to put together a cosmetic look of this garden that's very neat and tidy and gets people into the mood for cut flowers uh, and you'll see that in just a minute. Well we didn't mind the hand cut rustic look for the fence sections over here but for the main arbor that makes the entrance of the garden we wanted something that looks a little nicer a little more professional and put together for that we had something that was store-bought a PVC arbor that came in white and we just painted it to match the rest of the garden. We'll fill in the gaps here with little fence sections to just close up the presentation. On the veggie side of the garden, instead of going with hand-built raised beds, we went with these uh, galvanized steel raised beds over here. I want to give you a word or two about these galvanized garden beds and I'll show you some close-up shots as I do that. So these were provided to me by a company called Vivor and obviously I'm not against doing things do DIY, you know, the fences and all of the rest of the construction here, but if I can find a way to save myself some time and get a good looking product, that's a win for me and uh, because they offered it for free, hey, I'm going to take that too. Uh, these snap together in five to ten minutes, they look great, the color actually came in the theme that kind of fits this anyway and they're never going to rot. Now as for Vivor, they're a company I've dealt with before. Last year when I was looking for a heating solution for my greenhouse I made a video on a diesel heater which was supplied to me by Vivor. That one not for free but it was great and it's still my solution for the cold weather that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Vivor has a wide range and that's one thing I like about them. They do sell on Amazon but they have their own site uh, vivor.ca or vivor.com and on that site they have lots of outdoor and garden supplies, things from, you don't find them everywhere, cranks for uh, greenhouses or the electric cranks for greenhouses. They have the poly, the ground cloth. Uh, they have gardening tools like pruning saws, uh, edging for your garden beds, lots of cool stuff that you don't find just everywhere. Uh, also, when you stray a little outside of the gardening hobby, and not to give you unintentional insight into things I'm considering making hobbies of my own, but a concrete vibrator. Take the bubbles out of your concrete when you're making molds, or uh, a forge, propane-powered forge, or a laboratory stirring uh, device. So those things, I'll show you some pictures of those, are kind of cool, and you don't find them just anywhere. So I find it kind of an interesting site to browse. If you are interested in going there and checking out what they have, use the link in below the video, in the comments of the video. That will take you through to the link for these raised garden beds, but it also is a tracking link, so it tells that you came over from my video and maybe we'll encourage them to sponsor other things that I do. There's also a coupon code down below for 5% off site-wide. They have some specials on otherwise right now because of Black Friday, but that 5% is site-wide and certainly you're welcome to use that. One final note about why I'm pressing forward with this project now instead of waiting till spring is right now is the time to consider what plants I'm going to put into these garden beds. And it, by doing it now, I will save money. Obviously I have perennials in the greenhouse that'll be putting in these beds, but I also have bulbs that'll be putting in and these are bulbs for fall planting. I made order of this earlier on. And for those of you who follow this channel for nursery information, these fall bulbs, the bulbs that you plant in fall, are a great deal because they're inexpensive to buy if you're buying them wholesale. You get a chance to sell them on to your customers and then you also get two other chances to make money from them. In my case I'm putting them into pots in the greenhouse where I'm going to pot them and sell them for spring sale. I had a problem last year where I had a kind of a gap of product availability early on, nothing to sell. The early spring bulbs will fill that gap for me so it'll give me something else to sell. Also, I get the chance to put them into these garden beds and sell them next spring as cut flowers. So that's definitely something you want to think about now instead of waiting until spring. By then you won't have the fall bulbs as an option. You can certainly put other things in your garden bed but these won't be an option. Also I'm doing my seed ordering now 
for next spring. And so if I'm not thinking about what to go into these beds and not planning this right now, I'm gonna miss the window to buy those seeds now, start them in February inside the house and have them bulked up and ready to go into these garden beds in the range of March or April. Just as a side note, cut flowers are not a brand new thing for me and Lisa. We used to sell them as part of our staple at the farmer's market, but we dropped away from it a little bit when I was working hard at the nursery, uh, splitting my time, and so we just didn't have time to manage cut flowers. And in the last year, as we were making a lot of the changes on the farm, it also didn't seem like the right time to push back into cut flowers. Here, what we're doing is we're creating kind of a closed area that presents the cut flower business well to our customers. And that's a turn we've taken in our business the past year or so is trying to make the whole yard and the whole presentation of our nursery something that customers can easily understand and attracts them and makes them feel free to come onto the property and wander and do things. This particularly will be probably a mix of Lisa cutting bouquets and also customers being invited in to do uh, self-cutting of their flowers or you cut cut flowers and we haven't quite wrapped our head around how to do that yet in terms of what we're going to offer to our customers or present uh, but but obviously, you know, build it and they will come must be our motto because uh, it's it, we're, we're actually doing the building first and then we'll come up with the right business concept, which seems to be a backwards way to do it. But it is basically how we think is let's, let's build and, and make the farm the way we want it to be. And then we'll find the business model that matches that afterwards. Thanks so much for spending some time with me today talking about this project and why I think it's the right time to start it in the fall. And if you have any questions or comments, please drop those into the comments below the video and I'll see what I can do to help.